Oscar Piastri will race for McLaren in Formula 1 next season after the team successfully completed an opportunistic swoop for a driver Alpine thought would be its long-term future. A four-person panel for F1's Contract Recognitions Board ruled unanimously that the only contract to be recognised for Piastri was the deal he has with McLaren, which covers 2023 and 24. McLaren reacted to the verdict by immediately announcing Piastri as Lando Norris's teammate for next year, while a short statement from Alpine thanked the CRB, saying it acknowledged the decision and considered the matter closed. There was also a major revelation in the CRB ruling, as it said the deal between McLaren and Piastri was signed on the 4th of July. That was the Monday after the British Grand Prix, which was much earlier than many believed to be the case. Rumours of McLaren's interest in Piastri only emerged a couple of weeks after that, and it also means McLaren had signed the Australian seven weeks before it finalised the agreement for the early termination of Ricardo's three-year deal. However, while talks were ongoing about Ricardo's future at that point, Piastri's deal didn't immediately guarantee he would replace his countrymen. Had Ricardo and McLaren agreed to see out the third year of their contract together, Piastri would have waited on the sidelines before replacing Ricardo for 2024. Now this huge F1 story is resolved, make sure you let us know in the comments what you think of the outcome. Are you happy to see Piastri join McLaren or should he have stayed loyal to Alpine? And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button to become part of our crew. Piastri has not even taken part in an official Formula 1 weekend session and already he has achieved infamy. The Alpine junior and reigning F2 champion missed out on an immediate graduation to F1 in 2022 and Alpine instead put him on an extensive testing program in a 2021 F1 car currently amounting to around 3,500 kilometres and promised to find him an F1 race seat for 2023. But Alpine did not want to run Piastri as a rookie in 23, so it lined up a loan move to Williams because it favoured retaining Fernando Alonso alongside Esteban Ocon. But when Alonso shocked the team by agreeing a move to Aston Martin, Alpine tried to promote Piastri in his place. We now know that Piastri already had a signed McLaren deal in his pocket for weeks by the time Alonso dropped his bombshell. And we've also discovered that Alpine knew this too. According to a source close to the situation, Piastri had made his intentions clear to Alpine way before Alonso's shock decision to abandon ship because Piastri's manager Mark Webber did not want to see the youngster placed at the back of the grid team. That led to the extraordinary circumstances of Piastri publicly rejecting Alpine's announcement that he would be the team's 2023 driver. Reacting to the CRB verdict, McLaren team boss Andreas Seidel said his team was never worried about the outcome, even taking a small swipe at Alpine by suggesting it's better to ask the other party involved why they thought they had a case. Alpine feels a deep sense of betrayal from the Piastri camp about this and has been pushing a moral argument as well as a legal one. Team boss Otmar Zafnauer has even gone as far as saying Piastri should have shown more integrity rather than try to find a way to move somewhere else. The team held up its end of the bargain and was upset that Piastri was refusing to uphold his and trust the team's short and long-term plans for him. But while Piastri can be portrayed as one of the villains of this piece, it's a harsh characterisation. Under the instruction of his management team, led by Weber, he has been aggressive and has made the conscious decision to spurn Alpine because he thinks he has a better offer elsewhere. We can be sceptical about whether that's the right choice, but he has not behaved improperly, not when we're talking about someone trying to carve out a career in elite sport where there is little room for sentiment. It would be different if Alpine had intended to promote Piastri for 2023 all along, made that clear, signed a contract outlining exactly that plan, and then Piastri broke that agreement to sign for McLaren instead. That's not what happened, and furthermore, Alpine needs to shoulder some responsibility for this saga too. Trust and loyalty go both ways, and Alpine has behaved selfishly as well, at Piastri's expense at times. Alpine's passiveness cost Piastri a place on the 2022 grid, and he had no guarantee of an Alpine future in the medium term. If Alonso had signed the one year plus one deal he was offered, realistically Piastri could have been denied an Alpine seat until 2025, if not later. 
And at the same time, Piastri was expected to be content with being placed on loan at Williams, hardly the most ambitious of options. Contractually, Alpine was holding up its end of the deal, but this is hardly a set of circumstances that a young driver and his management team can believe is in his best interests. It also doesn't scream, you're our guy and we're going to do everything we can for you. A show of unconditional faith in Piastri would have been shunting Alonso aside. As for loyalty or integrity, to use Zafnau's words, Alpine first publicly questioned Piastri's the day after Alonso's 2023 defection to Aston Martin was announced. But barely 24 hours before that, Alpine had no intention of putting Piastri in one of its race seats. Alpine's entitled to do what it wants with its reserve driver, especially if it believes it has him under contract for 2023. But it's hypocritical to be disinterested in a driver one day and then upset that the driver isn't interested in you the next. Aside from any contractual naivety, Alpine can't be accused of behaving incorrectly in how it handled Piastri. No team would cast aside an in-form Alonso for a rookie, no matter how highly rated that rookie may be. So yes, Alpine behaved selfishly, but justifiably so. And really, that's all Piastri has done too. He and his management have reacted to a situation that Alpine created. Alpine, in particular CEO Laurent Rossi, dragged out the Alonso negotiations by getting into a game of contractual chicken. And they assumed Piastri would be okay with being parked at a back of the grid team with no guarantee of a future at Alpine itself in the short term. Ultimately, Alpine and Rossi treated others in the way that suited the team's best interests. And now an independent body of legal experts have decided Piastri and his management team were actually within their rights to seek a deal away from Alpine. So Piastri, who we've also established had reasons to question his Alpine future, is only guilty of trusting his management to pursue a fantastic alternative. He has now expressed his gratitude for all Alpine has done for him and wished the team the best for the future. Contractually, he owes Alpine no more, and the CRB decision supports that. McLaren's move for Piastri and the way F1's two leading midfield teams have fought for his services marks a rarefied level of interest in a rookie. Alpine's interest is long established, but there are plenty of reasons McLaren set its sights on a driver on the fringes of F1 with not even a free practice outing to his name, even though it comes at quite a cost and with significant risk. F1's governance means Alpine cannot challenge the CRB decision legally and it says it considers the matter closed. But that could just be in terms of accepting Piastri will be a McLaren driver next year. It may yet seek compensation for the expense of his testing program and other costs like the contribution to his F2 season with Prima. This is something Alpine has made repeated references to and would probably be a civic court process or the result of private mediation with McLaren. It has been suggested that McLaren will take on any costs the Piastri camp incurs as a result of his switch from Alpine. But even if that doesn't materialise, McLaren's bill is already expensive, having had to pay off Ricardo at great cost to get him to end his contract one year early. Exactly how good Piastri is or can be is a question mark, as it is for all rookies, even the ones with outstanding credentials. And the entire saga also puts a great deal of expectation, attention and pressure on Piastri before he has even so much as driven a McLaren. He moves from a team where he was well embedded to one that Ricardo is struggling with and where Lando Norris is an established, high-performing superstar. The headline achievements of Piastri's junior career show he's plenty good behind the wheel himself and off-track he's proven to be ambitious, intelligent and confident. In Seidel's words, he's clearly something very special and his personality is a perfect fit for the team. Piastri's management has manoeuvred this situation precisely because the likes of Weber are adamant he's exhibiting the traits of a future world champion. McLaren might yet not be convinced to that level, but the team has seen enough to believe he's a gamble worth taking. <laughs>